The games we're talking about today are exclusive to the Nintendo Switch eShop. You cannot get them on other platforms, and they were not released in physical form. Alright, let's get into the video. Here are five great co-op games, exclusive to the Nintendo Switch eShop. Box Boy and Box Girl Box Boy and Box Girl is a 2D puzzle platformer, the fourth one in the Box Boy series, and the first to include co-op mode. Players solve short puzzles using block building skills to assist each other to the end of the level. Between the different campaign modes, there are over 270 levels. With a $9.99 price tag, you'll definitely get your money's worth and your brain teaser fix. Along your journey, your characters gain new skills that help you maneuver through the environments and help the game from becoming too repetitive. One of the best features of the game is that, since the levels are short, you feel like you're always progressing. If you die, you respawn within seconds around the same location. The short wait time keeps you from losing interest because you're able to jump back into the action within seconds. It takes a minute to learn the block building controls, but once you've had some practice, it's really addicting. With the HAL Laboratory connection, I don't know why we haven't seen Box Boy and Box Girl added to the playable character roster on Super Smash Bros. Make it happen, Nintendo! The Die Hard box heads are hungry for more box action. The game works really well in co-op. You really feel like a lot of thought and effort went into designing the gameplay around two players. Sometimes one player will have less blocks than the other, requiring the player with more blocks to assist in creative ways. At other times, you'll need to use the combined number of blocks from both players to create a bridge, a staircase, or solve a puzzle. My favorite ability was the up hook. This felt like a new take on platforming. Even though puzzles become more complicated, the game consistently keeps a relaxing vibe that, once again, makes it super addicting and stress-free. This isn't my typical experience when it comes to puzzle games. I hope Box Boy gets more time to shine and the Boxverse continues to expand. We've mentioned the term box a lot. I'm sure a female genitalia joke can be found somewhere, but, well, we're not gonna be the ones to make that joke. Good job. Good job is seriously the best. Just go play it right now. It's a puzzle game in which characters complete exaggerated office tasks to get promotions in the company. It's a great story of nepotism. The best part about this game is that there's no one way to complete these tasks. You can be as creative and destructive as you want, breaking walls and shattering company property to get to your goal. Talk about therapeutic. You could also play by the rules and take your time going through the narrow doors and pathways, being as cautious as you want to complete the task. We did not play it that way. When the game is at its best, you're able to be as sloppy and haphazard as you want. It's all enjoyable and relaxing, except for the few levels that require precision skills to solve a puzzle. One level took us an hour. Not because we didn't know what to do, but because the controls weren't as tight as they needed to be. It just feels like this game was not created for small, precise actions. It's meant to be played with big swings and chaos. Office tasks range from delivering packages, organizing storage, setting up Wi-Fi, and moving employees to meetings. Other levels have you water the garden, and even more intricate puzzles like routing pipes for heating or lining up lasers to turn on batteries. You can operate a forklift, a buffer, a crane, and wrecking ball. The gameplay is always varied and stays fresh. Although the game doesn't require co-op, it definitely makes the demolition more fun with a friend. Work is always better when you have someone to gossip with while you're punching the clock, right? The dynamic split screen is the best and most fluid I've ever seen. When you're together, it's a single screen, and as you walk apart, the screen splits. You don't even notice the transition. It's that good. I want to see more games that implement split screen this effectively. I love the feeling this game gives you. It's so satisfying to be able to push people out of the way and smash walls just to plug in a printer. This game fulfills that deep desire to just go crazy in a public space, all without repercussions. You'll find yourself laughing hysterically at how absurd it gets. The ending of the story is told through the final task of the game. It's done perfectly. I just want to say to the developers, good job. The Stretchers The Stretchers is another unique game. We haven't really played anything else like this. 
In this game, you are two customized medics that must work together to collect the people that are on the ground because of reasons told in the goddamn story that you need to just see for yourself. And then you transport them to the hospital. Let me be clear, this story is ridiculous. I honestly didn't really follow it that much, but it's not important. This game also has that sense of carefree hilarity. You get to do whatever it takes to toss patients into the back of the ambulance. You'll find yourself dragging your patients across the ground and throwing them off buildings. The ragdoll movement is always fun to see. In true co-op fashion, some patients require both of you to carry them or simply make use of the stretcher. Different areas provide conveyor belts and slides to transport patients to the van. One of the most satisfying parts is that you get to drive like a maniac in that ambulance, breaking fences and going off jumps, doing barrel rolls to reach your destination. Later, you get some upgrades to make driving even more fun. The lighthearted nature of this game is consistent from beginning to end. It's just a completely enjoyable experience throughout the whole process. Each puzzle is straightforward and never gets challenging enough to create frustration. The game is pretty easy and can be completed in under four hours. You'll find yourself laughing over and over together. You even have some special skills such as singing and clapping. So in between hospital runs, you can work on your harmonies together. Super Kirby Clash. Super Kirby Clash mixes the traditional Kirby gameplay with RPG elements. There are four classes to choose from, Mage, Knight, Healer, and um, Guy with Hammer. Basically, it's your typical Kirby game, minus everything but the boss fights. The game can be played with up to four players. If you don't have three people to play with, the CPU can control the others, so you'll always have a full party to assist you in combat. I will never get sick of playing Kirby games. Even though they tend to recycle the same gameplay with little to no new features, I just don't care. Kirby is my comfort game series. Between the upbeat music, the cute characters, and the solid but laid back gameplay, it's a formula that I can never get enough of. Also, this is a free game that's really good. So why wouldn't you play it? Of course, there are some pay to win elements, but they are never required for you to progress through the game. So just take your time, level up your little Kirby's and enjoy the ride. The Kirby air ride? Vitamin Connection. Vitamin Connection is the one game that technically did get a physical release through limited run games, but for the purpose of this video, it's primarily known as an eShop game, and you can't easily buy the physical copy in stores. Vitamin Connection is another game that I don't know how to describe. It's kind of like a side scrolling shoot 'em up, but with a lot of extra gimmicks thrown in. Each player uses a Joy Con to control different parts of the ship. One player holds the Joy Con vertically to move the ship up and down and left and right, and is able to trigger the blaster. The other player holds the Joy-Con horizontally and physically turns it to control the rotation of the ship. This player can also fire the blaster after the first player initiates it. The story involves a human taking a vitamin. You control the vitamin traveling throughout the body to different body parts, each ending with a boss fight. This game utilizes the Joy-Con functionality better than any game I've ever seen. Each boss fight uses the Joy-Con in creative ways. One boss initiates a rhythm game that requires each player to move their Joy-Con in a specific way on the beat. For another boss, player 2's Joy-Con works as a motion sensor. As you move your hand closer and further from the side of your Joy-Con, your character's hand moves up and down as well. Another boss was a threading game that required both characters to carefully move in sync around the shape, avoiding the walls. Sure, the gameplay is pretty gimmicky, but it provides enough variety and creativity to keep it interesting. The whole game involves both players working together at all times. It might be an acquired taste, but if you can get into it, it's a good co-op experience. So there you have it. There's five great co-op games that you can only get on the Nintendo Switch eShop. If there are any others that we didn't mention, let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching. Smash that motherfucking like button, you little toad.
Bop, stop, pop, sweat, shop, gum, drop, bar, drop, flop, chop, slop. Go out.